So hi everybody, today I'm going to show you how to lay out morphs. This is the uh, very basic step to know before you can do your own graphical user interface. So let's do it. Well, before we start, I tell you that I have a twin page to this video. It, this is the page, I will put the link in the video description. Anyway, what's important here is that I copied everything I'm saying and also the wool cut block I'm running. So I copied here, from here to quiz. So this is our quiz. Open workspace. Okay, good enough. Okay, then we may open browser it's always nice to have I have one around good so let's start so we said we are talking about grouping morphs and morphs are called widgets in or widget in other graphical user interfaces toolkits so let's start with simple things before you see this is level morph so you make the new level morph you put some words inside it, hello world, for example, open in hand and control D is for running the command, I remember you, and I click it here and here is my string, hello world, is my label morph, okay, I can drag it around, etc. Let's put another, level 2, I create it, I put some stuff inside it and I open it in the end, that is, it's attached to the cursor to the mouse cursor. I put it here. What's the problem? That they are completely unrelated. They cannot be considered part of a same graphical user interface. So we want them to uh, be together. How do we do it? So le let's start from scratch. So I do central click, you get the allos here, click the X and kill the morph. So let's start afresh with something new, the layout morph. A layout morph is a morph that's again a widget that has only one purpose that's containing other morphs and let's say align them and control their, their size. So let's create it new, open in hand, again I place it here and then I can make it a bit larger. It has this color we will change it later so uh, now we we tell something to this layout morph which said okay like b row that is place stuff inside yourself like they were a row of things okay one after another in a row then we we tell it border with one so we want a border uh, size one pixel border color black I want the border to be colored black. This nice syntax is to send messages to always to play one. You can you can use it or not. You will see other way of doing it later. Okay, we saw it. We have it. Let's change the color. Gray. And okay, so let's put something inside it. For example, an image morph, I create it, and then I say to the layout morph, hey, layout morph, add yourself the morph image morph, and execute. And you see, the image morph, which by default shows a quiz, that's basically a rat, which displays um, the quiz motor icon. Okay, let's move on. So let's make a label, new, a label we've written inside the example, and we say again to lay one one to layout one add yourself the morph label one and that's it you see one after another after another again now we tell something border with to to do the to the label okay so look like to make it clear this is exactly the same stuff as saying this is only a bit shorter and then you can say this 
Okay, you get it now, what it does, the double column syntax, it's that. You just, you just save repeating lab one again and again and again. Okay, it's a very useful uh, syntax, let's say. Okay, let's add another label. Example two, with border color red this time. And let's add uh, also another thing called a boxed morph. A boxed morph is just a rectangle. So you create it, you add it, you change color, and then you we put a, a bit larger, uh, a bit larger border. Okay. Now we see um, this thing we call rectangle something that uh, boxed morph. We don't like it much. We would prefer to use this name, box one, as the variable. So we say, okay, let's delete this element. And so you see the way to do it is this one, delete, and it's gone. So let's do it again, box one. Good. Now, what happens now? It's true that these elements, you see, they are packed together. But if you increase the layout morph size, they don't stretch, so they don't behave actually how uh, you would want or you, how do you expect to see in a classical graphical user interface. We are coming to that shortly. But first, let's see this. If you tell to lay at one, hey, big column, it means what? Instead of being a row, it becomes conceptually a column. So the elements are ordered in this way. Let's see it. You see, it becomes a column. Okay, let's go back to row. We focus on row today. Then another thing that most important is that th they are too much nearby. I mean, too much confusion. So let's add some separation between them. 30 pixel. It's okay. You see, you stretch it. They are fixed. 30 pixel. Nothing much changes. Okay, now let's see something different. You see, uh, when when it packs the morph, it starts from the left, if you are in a row. That's the logical thing to do, because we write left to right. And if it had to pack in column, where would it start from? Well, let's see it from the top, I would say. From the top, definitely. Okay, so let's go back to row. So, suppose you want to pack them on the other side, so you want to put stuff from, 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 from the right side. So you do like this, axis edge weight 1, and that's it. Axis edge weight 0, they are packed normally, let's say, and 0, 5, what will do? It will center them, easy. And of course, you can choose any value between 0 and 1. You can do the same stuff in, with B column and see what happens. Okay, now, up to now, uh, we acted on the container. So we say, dear container, you put your elements in a row, you put your elements in a column, or separate each of your elements in a given amount. But we we want to give comments to the submorph. For example, I want to say that this one must be larger because I don't need all this extra space here and here. I want these two text to take all the space available that there is. We can do it. The way to do it is to operate on the layout spec, which is you you see, it's a message you send to um, to a morph. And it's valid if a morph is contained in a layout morph. So let's see what's inside it. We've explored. So we have an idea of what we can toggle. And you see, these are the things. Of course, proportional with proportional height are very interesting. Uh, and also of these, well, they are all useful. You will see now. So proportional width, level two, we say to level 2, hey, we want proportional with B1. What does it mean? Let's see it. Okay, to see the difference in this case, you need to change a bit the size of the layout so things get recomputed. Hmm? 
How, what happened? That it used all the space it found extra in the x direction, that is, on the width. If you tell it, I don't use all the space, like let's say 50% of the space available. Now let's tweak this and you see 50% of the space. Then we say these two elements want to sh uh, need to share the, the available extra x space. So we do um, level one, take the other 50% of the extra space. Let's go to see it. Good. And you see, it's working. Let's, let's squeeze it a bit and see, you see, everything is working well. This is very useful and what, what you expect from a typical graphical user interface. So there is, um, sometimes you want to know, uh, to ask the morph, how big are you? Okay, so you, you do this, morph big with morph height. Okay, let's see it, control D, and let's see it again. Control D, 36. I recommend, in general, you don't give a fixed uh, values to morph. It's important that they are uh, able to resize if you resize your uh, window, your container. What we see now, so let's say, for example, that, um, okay, they are aligned, it's fine, but suppose it's not what we want. We would like this, for example, to be on the top, on, on the top of the available Y space or on the bottom, how do we do that? You, you use this parameter of axis edge weight. So let's try it on level two. Then we move, go to move a bit. And you see it's on the top one. It will be on the contrary, on the bottom. And unsurprisingly, zero five put you in the middle. Okay, okay that, that can also be very useful. Now, okay, we saw how to move this up, move it down, then we can do another thing. I want it, the size in the y-axis to be different, to be larger, for example. So let's do it. Let's say that level two must be take 80% of the available y-space. Run it, we check it, and that's it. Let's do the same with level one with 60% space. Let's check it, very cool. It works. Now, let's do something a bit different. Let's try to change the size of the proportional height of, of the image stuff. 90% should be big. Let's go to toggle a bit. Oh, wow, that's not what we, we expected. So, to understand what happened, let's add a border to the uh, image morph. And you see what happened. Yeah. It happened that the border increased its size, but uh, the image didn't. Because um, how could it increase its size? These are pixels, so it should invent how what to put in all these new pixels that are available. So what Quiz does by default is it's let the image unchanged, and it changes only the frame. Uh, maybe we can change also on this one, so box uh, one. Let's take this 90%. And that's it. So you have all you need to know about laying out the morphs. Uh, one curiosity is this one. Suppose you want to know the submorph of a layout. That is whoever is containing it. So you just do like this. Sub submorphs and these are elements. Okay. Now let's do one step more. That is, uh, this is not not just an API that you use for your own program. All the quiz environment is built with that. So look this. Um, for example, let's take this browser, okay? And you see this dimension, we, we, the, the width of this window. I want it to be larger, so I could stretch it like this, but I don't want. I don't want to do it with code, so I center click, center click, center click until I arrive here, 
and they see that, that this is a pluggable list morph, okay, now I don't care. But what I want to do is this, is explore morph, pluggable list morph. Now, as we have seen, layout spec or layout spec controls the behavior of this element respect to its layout, which most probably is around here. Hmm? And so what we can do is this, for example, mm, proportional width, you see, is 0 to 20 percent. Okay, so we say self, self in self in this case is the element I have highlighted. So self proportional. Oh, where is it? Width. Proportional with, let's say, 0, 9. Now let's tweak a bit. Bam! And it works, you see? So now we suspect that this element is contained in uh, a layout morph like this. I would do like that. So let's investigate a bit. The owner, you see, is this layout morph. So I go to the owner. And they do self. Self border with three and then self border Aha, uh -huh. here it is. So you see all the quiz environment now it's in your hand because you you understood how things are placed and how they are put together so next time we will see how to make a little graphical user interface because now you know how to put the morphs together and the morphs in quiz and morphic it's everything that you can see so i hope you like it see you next time bye